So in today's tutorial, I am going to show you how to make this fun and fantastic jar topper. The piece that I actually have on the jar here, I'll pull it off, is a cup of coffee with cream swirl. I like coffee. However, in the tutorial, you can make this cup of coffee into anything you like. So right here, I have a nice cup of tea. This is a really fun project. These miniatures are super nice and cute. And what a great piece to put on top of a jar that you can fill again with treats coffee packets tea packets biscotti other kinds of wonderful little bits and pieces this particular jar that i have here while it has candy in it right now for the purposes of this video i will i, I chose this jar in order to put like extra crochet hooks and other notions into this jar for my studio but you can choose your jar according to whichever size you'd like to make it or whichever charge size jar you want to um, work with, whether it's a small jar for a small little gift or some decorative motif for your house or home, or whether it's a larger jar to really put lots of yummy things into it. It's really up to you. And the instructions I give you will help you adapt your jar topper to whatever size jar you happen to choose to work with. Let me give a warm welcome to all my Weaving Weird siblings. For those of you who aren't in the know, my name is Sid. I'm a retired tattoo artist turned active fiber artist and crocheter. And here on my channel, you and I get to create a little magic with every knot. So don't forget to hit the subscribe and like buttons. This doesn't cost you a thing, but it does help me to provide you with weekly tutorials featuring original designs, classic patterns, and lacy motifs. I'm always interested in your feedback, so feel free to leave your comments and questions below. Now let's get started. For this tutorial, you're going to need a few things. You're going to want a variety of yarns in fingering weight or lace weight, something either a light two or smaller. I have some scrap sock yarn here. It's a wool blend. I couldn't tell you much more about it. And then all the other yarns I'll be using are going to be a variety of my palette fingering weight yarns from Knit Picks. These are my mini skeins. And you'll use as many or as few colors as, as you choose to do. You're going to need some stuffing for sure. Not a lot, just a little bit. You're going to want a jar. Now, your jar is going to be pretty much up to you. You're going to pick the jar according to your needs. So maybe you just use a standard size quart jar and use that as maybe a gift jar. And this is the topper that you put on top of it. You can fill it with teas or honey sticks, or candies, or if this is going to a coffee drinker, you can fill it with biscottis, or maybe little packets of their favorite coffee blends. There's lots of different ways you can dress this up and fill up this jar. For me, I may simply just use it as a notions jar or a candy jar. This is why the jar I chose is a little bigger than what you might have normally thought in terms of a jar with a topper because I wanted something big enough to fit my hand comfortably into. And you may decide that that's a good call for you or not. This is really personalized and I give you a couple of tips along the way in order to help you determine how, how much or how little actual crocheting you're gonna be doing for this project. Don't worry, it sounds way more complicated than it is. It's super simple, not a deal. Also, you're going to want to use a number two or a 1.5 millimeter hook, steel hook. 
an embroidery needle with a large eye. You're going to use several stitch markers, a pair of scissors, and also for this project, I'm using elastic. Enough, and don't need a lot of elastic, you just need enough elastic to comfortably fit around the neck of your jar. However, if you don't have a small, thin scrap piece of elastic for this, you can simply use a ribbon or chain yourself a bit of cording in order to do a running stitch, lack of a better word, weave it in and out of the edges of your of your jar topper and then just tie it in a bow in order to keep that topper in place. I'm going to use elastic for this and we get to that part. If I didn't make myself clear enough, I'll show you what I mean in terms of using a piece of ribbon or crocheting yourself a bit of cord. I'm going to use my multicolored sock yarn to create the tablecloth part of my of my jar topper. And because the lid is round and I want kind of an interesting shape but not too much ruffliness, I am going to create a pentagon shape. So I'm going to begin that shape by making a chain of 5. So we got one, two, three, four, and five. And then I'm going to join. Then I'm going to chain three. And I'm going to double crochet two right into that ring. So one and two. Next, I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to place three double crochets into the ring. So one, two, and three. Then I'm going to chain two again. And I'm going to place three more double crochets into the ring. One, two, three. I'm going to chain two more. I'm going to place three double crochets into the ring. One, two, and three. Then chain two more. And then I'm going to do that one last time. Place three double crochets into the ring. I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to join into that third chain of the first three chain stitch. So that completes the first round of the tablecloth of our jar topper. So now as you can see, I've got five clusters of three double crochets separated by two chains. And now each one of those two chains is going to be a corner of your tablecloth. So Next, I'm going to set myself up for the second round. So one, two, three. I'm going to chain three. Then I'm going to double crochet right back here into the same chain two space. Next, I'm going to chain one. Then I'm going to double crochet two. In the next chain two space. And 
you're going to then chain two and then you're going to make two more double crochets into that same two chain space. Next, you're going to chain one. And then you're going to work that corner just like you worked the last corner with two double crochets plus a chain two plus two more double crochets in that same two chain space. Next, you're going to chain one. Then you're going to work the next two chain space just like you've done the previous ones. So double crochet two times plus chain two plus two more double crochets into that same two chain space. Chain one. We have our next corner to do. So two double crochets plus two chains plus two more double crochets in the same two chain space. Then you are going to chain one. And then that brings us back around again to the beginning of round two. So here, what you are going to do is that you are going to double crochet twice, and then chain two, and then join into that third chain of the first three chain stitch of round two. And that's the completion of round two with five corners. Then we want to begin round three by chaining three. And again, you're going to want to double crochet into this same two chain space. Then you're going to chain one. Now in this next chain, space you are going to want to make three double crochets so one two and three then you'll chain one and then that brings us back to our next corner now in that corner space which is the two chain space you are going to work that corner like you have been so it will be two double crochets plus two chains, plus two double crochets. Then you're going to chain one, and you're going to place three double crochets into the next chain space. And you're going to chain one, and then you're going to work your next corner the way you would normally work your corner with your two double crochets plus chain two plus two more double crochets in that same two chain space. And then you're going to chain one and again three double crochets in the next chain space. So as you can see, this is your basically your granny, your basic granny stitch. Chain one, work the next corner. We'll finish working round three, and then I'll leave you to it, to making it as big as you need to. And I will show you what that should look like. So again, two double crochets plus two chains plus two more double crochets and then chain one three double crochets in the next chain space and then chain one and then next corner two double crochets chain two 
two more double crochets, and a chain one. And then in the last chain space, I'm going to place my three double crochets, and you will too. And then you will chain one. And that brings us back to our first corner we began in. And then you are going to place two double crochets, chain two, and then join at the third chain of the first three chain stitch for round three. So this is some this is what you have. And you're going to continue this same pattern until the desired size that will fit the lid you are using on your jar. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment. But quickly, so in each corner, you are going to, of course, do your double crochet plus two chain plus two double crochets. And in any chain one space, right, because once you've finished your corner, you're going to chain one. And then when you, you know, in your next chain one space, you're always going to make a three double crochet basically cluster. So you're going to place three double crochets into the same chain one space. Now, when you're finished, you should have something that looks similar to this. And this is as big as I need it to be. And your mileage might be different. So this is the size of my lid. And I want this to fit just a little bigger than the diameter of my lid. So when I put this on, right, I want to make sure I have enough, enough fabric to fold over the width of my lid and then still have enough fabric so that when I place my elastic on the inside, everything is covered nicely. And then towards the end of the video, when we get to doing the assembling, I will show you how that is done. So that should give you some idea. So just keep going. Just make as many rounds as you need in order to properly fit this lid. Now, at first glance, you may say, hey, but the edge of your pentagon shaped tile is only coming just barely over. And that's fine. That's what I want. Because my tablecloth isn't quite finished yet. I'm still going to trim it out with a little bit of a lacy trim. So, so this colored part of your topper, you'll want it to fit your lid something similar to this. So to make the lacy edge of this jar topper, I'm going to begin with a seven treble shell stitch. And I'm going to do that all the way around. That'll be my first round, all the way around my tile. And you can pretty much start in any chain space you like. I am going to start here at this chain space. It really doesn't matter. It's just more personal preference. I'm going to go ahead and tie into that space. And then make a single crochet. Then you're going to make a treble into the next chain space. And after that, make an additional six trebles into that same space. So this next one makes three, four, five. Six, and one more makes a total of seven. Next, I'm going to single crochet in the next chain one space or rather next chain space, because you might end up hitting that in the chain two space also. 
that's the really nice thing about this particular shell stitch. It's very forgiving when going around corners. So no matter how big or small this particular topper is going to be for you on your jar, this shell trim is going to work out just fine. Next, in the next space, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to treble seven. That's one. And seven. And again, single crochet in the next chain space. And then another seven trebles in the space after that. And continue that same pattern all the way around until you've come back here into the beginning. And we'll discuss what happens next. Okay, so now that I've completed my first round with my shells, I've come back here to the beginning. And as you can see, normally I would make my single crochet in my next chain space. But then the space after that is already taken by the beginning of a shell. So in this particular situation, I'm just going to go ahead and skip right over that. And I'm going to slip stitch right into this next shell. Just like that. And you'll hardly even notice it. This shell stitch really is quite forgiving when dealing with corners and an uncertain amount of, of stitches that may or may not land quite perfectly. So now once you've made your slip stitch, I'm going to go ahead and chain one, two, and three. So go ahead and chain three. Skip your next stitch and single crochet in the stitch after that. Again, chain three, skip your next stitch, and single crochet in the stitch after that. And that puts you about three trebles in. So for this next one, I'm going to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slip stitch in this third chain from my hook. That's making my first pico. Then I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to single crochet in the next stitch after that. So you should have something that looks like this. So then I'm going to go ahead and chain three again. One, two, and three. And I'm going to skip a stitch. And then single crochet in the stitch after that. One, two, three. And skip a stitch. Single crochet in the stitch after that. And one, two, three. Skip a stitch. Single crochet into the stitch after that. And that'll bring me back to being three trebles in. Then I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to slip stitch in the third stitch from the hook. Then I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to single crochet in the stitch after that. And this is all you need to do all the way around the entire, the entire piece. So you're going to follow that same pattern. And whenever you get here to the third treble, this is where you're going to do your pico. And when I've completed this entire tile with this last round, then I'm going to fasten off and weave in my, my final ends. And this part of the topper, the tablecloth, if you will, will be finished. I'm going to show you how to make is the saucer. And for that, you'll need to make your magic ring. And in that ring, you're going to single crochet seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. 
pull your tail tight. Now, so since we will be working in a spiral, you will want to make a single crochet into that first single crochet of round one to start your round two. Now I know I'm using a darker yarn here and I apologize for that but I think you'll still understand. I mean this is a pretty simple basic pattern so I think you're going to do just fine. And then because in round two I placed my stitch marker under that first stitch for round two and then because this is round two, what you want to do is you want to increase in each stitch. So basically you want to place two single crochets in each stitch. So that's one, two in the first stitch, three, four in the second stitch. So when I've completed round two, I will have 14 stitches to complete my round two. And I'm going to begin with round three. And for round three, I'm going to begin with a single crochet into that first stitch from round two. I'm going to replace my stitch marker. And then in the next stitch, you're going to place two single crochets. So one, two. And then in the stitch after that, one single crochet. And in the stitch after that, two single crochets. So basically, you're just going to follow the standard pattern when making a circle. So this is round three. So for this pattern in round three, it's basically going to be a single crochet, then a single crochet increase. A single crochet, then a single crochet increase. For round three, you're going to do that seven times. So for round three, you should end with a total count of 21 stitches. Next. We're going to move on to round four. And this pattern is going to consist of a single crochet twice. So a single crochet in the first stitch, a single crochet in the second stitch, and then an increase. So single crochet twice and then an increase. So you'll want to continue that pattern all the way around and that'll give you a count of 28 when you've completed round four. Next for round five, again, I'm going to place a single crochet. And you're going to single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet in the stitch after that. So the pattern's going to be single crochet three times, then an increase. Single crochet three times. And then an increase. And then of course you're going to repeat that pattern a total of seven times and you will end up with a count of 35 stitches for round five. Now for round six, I'm going to place our first single crochet and then you're going to replace the stitch marker. And this pattern is going to consist of single crochet four times. And then an increase. Single crochet four times. And then an increase. You're going to end up with a total of a 42 count for round six. So next for round seven, again, you're going to begin by placing your first single crochet and then replacing your stitch marker. 
and then you're going to single crochet four more times. So basically you single crocheted five times and then you did an increase. And then again, you're going to do that a total of seven times that pattern, single crochet five and then an increase. And you're going to end round seven with a count of 49. And then for round eight, I'm going to continue with the first single crochet and replace stitch marker. And this time you're going to do a total of six. So you're going to single crochet six and then an increase. Six and then an increase. And of course you're going to do this a total of seven times and that'll give you an end count of 56. So we've got our one, two, three, four, five, six, and then an increase. And then for round nine, going to single crochet seven, and then an increase. Single crochet seven, and then an increase. And that will leave us with an end count of 63. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then an increase. Now for round 10, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to single crochet eight and then increase. Single crochet eight and then increase. I'm going to do that seven times and I will end with a count of 70. Next, you're going to want to do one more round. And for round 11, I'm simply going to single crochet in each stitch. So that will leave you with a total of 70 stitches for round 11. So now once you've completed round 11, your saucer should begin to look like this. Then you'll want to remove your stitch marker and then slip stitch into the next stitch and then fasten off your work. Now, once you've woven in your tail, I'm going to go and do one more thing. I'm going to embellish the edge of my saucer to give it more a china look. And so for this, I'm going to do just a super basic little heart motif. And so how I do this is I'm going to weave my end in and I want to be really careful as to how I do this because it really is quite a contrasting color, but I want as little of it as possible to show. Now, if I was doing this on something where the bottom might show, like let's say I was making this bigger and making like a child's tea set, for example, I might consider making two of these circles and then doing my embroidery work and then sandwiching it together if I didn't think I could hide my yarn very effectively into the backing of of the of the fabric but because this is going to be laying on the fabric of my jar topper nobody is going to see the back anyways and so I don't really have to worry too much about it so I'm going to go ahead and pull my yarn through and I want it sort of near the edge. So I'm going to be working about the third row down from my edge. And what I'm going to do is, so I've pulled my yarn through the one hole, and then I'm going to insert my hook again. And I'm going to come up into the next round 
and a hole over or a stitch over, however you want to look at it. Oh, and I think you can see. And then I'm going to insert my needle back into that same hole where I made that stitch from. And then I'm going to bring my needle back up and I'm going to bring it down back to the original hole where I pulled my needle through to begin with to create that first chain. And then again, I'm going to take my hook and bring it back through that, take my hook, sorry, take my needle and bring it back through that hole, up around and into the next stitch over. And that gives me this little basic heart shape motif. And again, I'm going to put my needle back through. Now, of course, this is optional. You don't have to do this if you want, or you might have another way of embellishing the edge of your saucer as well as your cup, because we'll be doing this stitch on the cup as well. But that's entirely up to you. Then next, I'm going to go over three stitches from the heart. So one, two, three. And in the next hole, I'm going to bring up my needle. And I'm going to continue doing that all the way around. So now you can see this is what my, my saucer looks like. In order to avoid too much redundancy in this video, I've just gone ahead and given you the instructions on how to complete the circle for the liquid aspect of your cup. In the same vein, I have decided to just give you the instructions on how to make the slice of cake on your own. These are pretty straightforward instructions, at least for this aspect of the piece. And so in order to save time, and redundancy just grab yourself a paper and a pencil and write these instructions down and i honestly don't think you're going to have any trouble putting together this slice of cake for yourself next however i will show you how to assemble the basic part of your cake all right so once you've gotten your pieces crocheted go ahead and take your stitch markers and here at the point of one side of your diamond shaped piece, go ahead and stitch marker that point right to the center of what would have been your long rectangular piece. And then on either end of the rectangular piece, go ahead and stitch marker those end pieces to the middle section of your diamond piece on either side. So this will be where your cake starts taking its shape. And then, of course, you'll just fold the top part over. And you're going to stitch all your seams shut. Now, you're going to leave a small spot open so you can stuff your cake. And then you're going to continue to, to sew it shut. So now that you've completed basically your slice of cake, and yours is going to look something like this. I'm going to begin to make the toppings. Now for this cake, it's a cherry topping. So I'm going to make the cherries. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to begin by chaining 18. So I'm going to have one, two. So now that I have a chain of 18, I'm going to yarn over. And I'm going to insert my hook into the third chain from the hook. And then I'm going to yarn over again. I'm going to insert my hook back into that chain. I'm going to yarn over one more time. And I'm going to insert my hook again into that chain. Yarn over. I'm going to pull that yarn all the way through. 
and I've created my first cluster. And then I'm going to go ahead and chain one. I'm going to chain one more. I'm going to skip a chain. And in the next chain, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook. I'm going to pull some yarn through. Yarn over, insert my hook again, and pull yarn back through and yarn over, and insert my hook one more time and pull that yarn through. And uh, yarn over, I'm going to pull my hook all the way through, and I'm going to create my next little cluster. And I've chained one. I'm going to chain again second time. I'm going to skip the next stitch. And in the stitch after that, I'm going to create my next cluster. So yarn over, pull some yarn through, yarn over, insert my hook, pull some yarn through, yarn over, insert my hook, and pull my yarn through one more time. And then again, yarn over and pull that all the way through the loops create my next cluster with a chain and then I chain one more time. So I'm going to continue doing that for the length of this row and then I'm going to chain three and turn my work and then we'll begin with row two. Okay so now that I've completed my first row and I've chained three and now I've turned my work and next, I'm going to do my next cluster right here in this chain two space. So just as before, yarn over, insert my hook, and pull some yarn up. Yarn over, insert my hook again, and pull some yarn up. Yarn over, insert the hook, and pull my yarn back up. And I'm going to yarn over and pull that through. And I'm going to chain one and two. And I'm going to continue that all the way down until. I hit this last space, this last two chain space. So now that I've completed row two, I'm going to chain two. I'm going to turn my work. And I'm going to continue. Do just as I've done before. And then next chain two space, I'm going to make my next cluster. And then chain two. The next space, my next cluster. And then chain two. And I will continue that until the last two chain space. And then I'll chain two, turn my work, and continue just as I've done for rows two. And of course, this row as well. And I'll continue that until I have just the one cluster left at the very tip of, of the topping for my cake slice. So your piece should look something like this. You can go ahead and cut yourself a nice long tail for sewing. And then you're going to sew your topper on. Now don't be afraid to kind of scrunch your, your cherries together as you sew this on just kind of push them together a little bit that's don't be afraid to do that just make sure that it fits the top of your cake just nicely so once you've finished sewing your topping on you should have something that looks like this and now we're gonna go ahead and crochet the the frosting and so I have one piece already completed and we'll put one piece here and then one piece down here. We'll sew that on. So in order to make that, we need to go ahead and I'm going to chain two. So I've got one and two. And then in the second stitch from the hook, or rather this first chain, I'm going to single crochet two single crochets into that same stitch. Next, I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. 
I'm going to turn my work. And in the same stitch, I'm going to place three double treble crochets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to yarn over three times. And I'm turn making this into a bobble. So yarn over three times. Insert your hook into that same stitch. Pull yarn through. And then yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over the third time. And instead of doing it the fourth time, you're going to stop right there because we're going to get our next crochet set up. So one, two, three. Into the same stitch. Pull that yarn through. And then yarn over, pull through once. Yarn over, pull through twice. Yarn over, pull through three times. So before we do it again, we have one more. So yarn over three times. Insert your hook. Pull that yarn through. Yarn over and pull through once. Yarn over, pull through twice. Yarn over, pull through the third time. And now we're going to make our cluster. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to pull that yarn through all the loops that are remaining on the hook. So that'll be the first half of our of our frosting trim. I don't know what it's called on a cake. Next, in the next single crochet, I'm going to do the double treble crochet four times. So not once. Twice. Three times. Fourth time. So we got one, two, and three. I'm going to do the yarn over again and pull that through all the loops on the hook. I have completed the second half of this frosting segment. I'm going to chain two, one and two. I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to single crochet in the same stitch. I'm going to single crochet in the stitch after that. And that'll be the separation between the segments. Next, you're going to want to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Turn your work. So that'll give me a total of four segments. So once you have your segments done, your two four segments, this is where you're going to sew. You're going to sew one segment right here at the, oops, that's the wrong place, right here at the back end of your topping to give it a nice frosted edging to your cake slice. And then also, again, right down here at the bottom edge of your cake to just show that your cake has a generous amount of frosting. Now, once I've finished the next two segments on here and sewn them onto the cake, I will show you what that should look like for you. If you haven't already figured it out, which I'm sure you have. So now once you've got your frosting sewn on, you have your very sweet looking slice of cake. And then you're going to want to sew it onto your plate in any way that you think works best. I'm going to go ahead and sew it along the bottom because the plate is going to be sitting right on top of the topper and I'm going to end up sewing it onto the topper anyway. So it's not like anything's going to be seen. And then you can kind of see how that's all going to play out. So next we're going to move on to the cup. And for the cup, I'm going to need to take my chosen color. And I'm going to begin with a magic circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain one. Next, I'm going to single crochet seven in this ring. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
and seven. I'm going to close a ring. And then I'm going to continue on to round two. And as we did with the saucer, and also as we did with the liquid piece that goes into your cup, um, we're going to continue to crochet in a spiral. So in the first single crochet, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place two single crochets. Or rather, I'm going to increase. And before I move on, I'm going to take my stitch marker. I'm going to place it right there into that first single crochet of round two. And then in each stitch after that, I'm going to increase. So when I've completed round two, I will have 14 stitches. One, two. So next, I'm going to move on to round three. And for round three, I'm going to begin by making a single crochet into that first stitch of round three. And then in the stitch after that, I'm going to increase. Then in the stitch after that, I'm going to repeat the pattern. So I'm going to make a single crochet and then an increase in the stitch after that. So I'm going to continue this pattern. And when I've completed this round, I will have 21 stitches. Now I'm going to move on to round four. And I'm going to begin by placing a single crochet into that first stitch of round four and then replacing my stitch marker. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next stitch. And in the stitch after that, I'm going to increase. So that's the pattern that we need to follow for round four. A single crochet once and then a single crochet again. And then in the next stitch is going to be an increase. So we're going to do that a total of seven times and that will give us 28 stitches for round four. So again, single crochet, single crochet, and then an increase. Now that we've completed round four, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to single crochet in that very first single crochet. And then I'm going to replace my stitch marker. And then for round five, we're simply going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So you'll end round five with 28 stitches also. So we've got our first stitch and then two, three, now next for round six, again, I'm going to remove my stitch marker and I'm going to place my first single crochet into that next stitch for my first stitch of round six. And I'm going to replace my stitch marker. And then for the pattern on this round for round six, you're going to single crochet three times and then an increase. So we've got the first single crochet, second single crochet, third single crochet, and then an increase. I'm going to repeat that pattern a total of seven times. And at the end of round six, we will have 35 stitches completed. Now next for round seven, as before, I'm going to get my first single crochet in there and then replace my stitch marker. And then I'm going to complete round seven by simply single crocheting in each stitch. So when I've completed round seven, I will have 35 stitches for this round. Next, we're going to move on to round eight. And for round eight, I'm going to start with a pattern of single crocheting four times and then an increase. So we just put in our very first stitch for round eight. So that'll be one, two, three, four, and then an increase. 
can do that a total of seven times. And with that, we'll finish off round eight with a total of 42 stitches. Now next, for rounds nine through 11, we're going to simply single crochet in each stitch. So I'm gonna begin round nine with my first single crochet. I'm gonna replace my stitch marker. And then I'm gonna to continue to single crochet for round nine for a total of 42 stitches. And then I'm going to do exactly the same thing for rounds 10 and rounds 11. And I'll meet you right back here when we are ready to do round 12. Now next for round 12, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get my first single crochet into that stitch and get my stitch marker back into place. Now for this one, what we want to do is we want to single crochet 13 and then increase. We're gonna do this three times. So I already have my first, two, three, four, 12, and 13, and then the next stitch and place an increase. I'm going to do that three more times, or rather, I'm sorry, I'm going to do that two more times, giving us a total of three times for the pattern. And when we've completed round 12, we will have 45 stitches. Now that we've completed round 12, we're going to go on to do rounds 13 and 14 in exactly the same way. And that is going to single crochet in each stitch. So for rounds 13 and 14, simply going to single crochet in each stitch, giving us a total of 45 stitches at the end of each one of those rounds. So now that we've completed round 14, we have three different options in terms of um, how, how we're going to go forward. The first option is if you wanted to embroider something on the outside of your cup, this would be the time to slip stitch in the next stitch and then cut a tail and then do your embroidery before moving on to the next step. If you plan on just leaving your cup the single color or colorway that your yarn happens to be, so you don't plan on doing any particular embellishments on it, then just leave your, you know, you don't have to cut your yarn or anything like that. Just hang on a few minutes before we move on to the next step. Now me, and this is for those of you who are interested in going this way, I am changing colors here so that I can have the rim in the color of the saucer. So basically I'm just trimming my rim of my cup out into the dark green, the Douglas fir green that I used on the saucer. And so for that, and before I move on to that, because that'll be the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm then going to slip stitch in the next stitch, just like so. And then I'm going to trim my yarn and I'm going to change colors here in a moment after I after I finish tying off tying off my yarn and weaving it in well this because I'm going to be stuffing it I don't really have to weave it in I just get it to where we just pull it back away and out of the way And just kind of hide that stitch a little bit. Okay, so I'm assuming those of you who wanted to embroider on your cups, you've completed that. Those of you who have decided to just use the same color, continue using the same color without any embroidery, you're, I'm assuming, ready to go. And then those of us who are just doing the, the rim of our cup in the color, that we choose to do it. In my case, I'm doing it in the color of my cup's saucer. Now, this is also the time you want to pick up the circle you crocheted that's going to represent the liquid 
in your cup. Now, for me, this is going to be tea. So I use this light seagrass green. And then I just whip together a quick little tag that says tea. And I strung my tea bag tag right through the center of my tea liquid. So basically then what I'm going to do and what you're going to do is going to take your liquid or what represents your liquid, this circle here, I'm going to line it up here inside your cup. And it doesn't really matter where it goes. It's just going to line it up from sti you know, stitch to stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet these two pieces together. So I'm going to start probably a little back from where I slip stitched. Probably just a few stitches back. I'm just going to go ahead and right there, I'm going to tie in the green or whatever color you're using for the lip of your, of your cup. Now, if you opted not to, not to change out any colors or not to embroider, then just start where, where you've been kind of holding, holding a place until we moved on to this next step. So then go ahead and just single crochet. Once you tie in, single crochet into that same stitch. And then single crochet in each of the stitches after that, just making sure that you catch both pieces of fabric so you can single crochet them together. And you're going to do this all the way around. But leave yourself a little bit of an opening. So leave yourself about half an inch, may maybe an inch. I mean, I guess it depends on you. Just enough of an opening so you can actually lightly stuff your cup before continuing crocheting everything shut. Okay, now keep in mind that the circle that represents your liquid is going to be four stitches greater than than the count of the outside of your cup. So just keep that in mind as you're stitching the two pieces together. And so at four different intervals, like every quarter of your round, just go ahead and skip this a stitch that happens to be the represent or from the circle that represents your liquid. Now once you've completed that, and have your circle lip put on. What you're going to do is you're going to need to cut yourself a nice long tail because this is what you're going to use to kind of pull your lip in on itself so that it has more of a nice round edge. So right now this looks a lot like a bowl, right? Or even even it could be like a pie dish. So we want it to be more cup-like. So just go ahead and cut yourself a nice long tail and just run that needle right here in between the stitches of your, of your single crochet. So you're not running it behind or you're not running it in front. You're just running it right down the center between those stitches. And then you're just going to just pull ever so gently until you get the amount of tension. And you're going to want to do this all the way around. And you'll fiddle with it just a bit in order to get the shape that you want. Because these little projects always require a certain amount of shaping. And so you can see as I pull that in, it starts pulling everything in as I want it. Now, when I get it to about the right tension that I want, I'm going to make one more circle around. And then I'm going to weave in what's left to kind of hold everything into place. And then after that, move on to the next step. Okay, so once you have your cup shaped 
the way you'd like to have it shaped. I'm going to go ahead and make the handle. So now the handle is the next thing we're going to do. And it's really quite simple. You're going to want to start by leaving yourself a little bit of a tail. And then go ahead and single chain 18. So that one, two, three, four, five. 17, and 18. Next, I'm going to want to single crochet a row all the way back. But now how we're going to want to do this is we're going to want to do the second chain from the hook. But I'm going to have you insert it right here into this back hump. Right? So on a standard chain, for those of you who don't know exactly what it is I'm saying, you're going to have your bottom loop here, your top loop here. And then when you turn your chain over, right, and you have these little humps right down here that kind of thread down the middle of the back of that chain, those are the stitches that we're going to work in. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to insert my hook, and I'm going to single crochet. And then next, insert my hook and single crochet. So I'm going to single crochet in each one of those humps down the length of this chain. And then I'm going to fasten off and I'm going to leave myself a bit of a tail for sewing this handle onto the cup. So now this is what your handle should look like. And how I do it is I take where my yarn is coming out. This is going to be the bottom of my handle. And I find the spot that I ended my rim on. And this is where I'm going to attach my handle. So I'm going to figure out about where I want to place the bottom of my handle and tack that on. And then I'm going to take my handle and I'm going to scroll it under like that. And then I'm going to tack that bit on. And I'll meet you right back here after I've and done now that. I'm going to show you how to put it all together. So this is basically the topper. Already put together. And I'll show you again. So this is the lid. And this fits right over the top. And now I have elastic on the inside. And that elastic helps to keep this topper in place and all the pieces the little motifs are sewn right onto the top from the bottom and so how we put on the elastic so with the elastic you took your elastic and you used just enough to fit around the neck of your jar just right around here just so that it would fit Snug enough to hold the topper on, but not so snug that it's going to be a problem getting it on and off. So we really just want it to sit there nicely. And there's enough weight behind it that it's going to do just that. So long as you just have your elastic just nice enough to fit nicely over the, over the outside of that lip and the neck of your jar. So what I did here was I simply chained a length of chain long enough to to simply go around the complete width of my fabric lying flat okay and so i just cut these corners a little bit the five corners just because i wanted the top to lay flat and not pooch up so i wanted it to be able to go into a complete circle so if you can imagine this fabric lying flat and then i took the chain and I just made sure that it was long enough to go into a complete circle right on the inside edge of that fabric where I wanted it to be at the neck and where I wanted it to close at the neck making the top part of the fabric lie flush with the top part of my lid 
right? So we want enough fabric that's going to hang over the lip and then this next bit of fabric that's going to be hanging off the edge of your lip but snug against the neck of your jar, that's the approximate location on your fabric that you are going to place your elastic. And so the easiest way to do the elastic, you might have a different way of doing this, but the easiest way to do the elastic, again, is to chain a chain long enough that's going to, that's going to handle the circumference of the fabric that you have planning to pull over the lid. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to make a mesh, right? You're going to, you're going to crochet a mesh that is going to be wide enough to handle the width of your elastic. So in my case, I needed a treble. So I crocheted for my piece. I needed to crochet like 130 chains. And then in the fifth, or rather the sixth chain from the hook, I went ahead and I made a treble into that chain. And then I chained two, I skipped two, and then I made a treble into the chain after that. So basically it was the third chain from the last chain that I had placed my treble into. And basically that's how I made, that's how I continued with the entire strip. So when it was done, I basically had what looked almost like a ladder. And then I went and I sewed that ladder on. And then I took my my elastic. Let's see, let me find the end. So then I took my elastic and I wove it through so that I had both ends of my elastic. Oh, here we go. Both ends of my elastic out of there, right? And then I sewed my elastic together and then let it settle back in and it pulled or rather cinched my fabric quite nicely. Now, once I had my fabric cinched where I wanted it and it fit nicely over the lid, as you can see, so when you look at the bottom, you can see how my elastic fits just on the other side of that lid. And it sits right nicely next to the neck of the jar. Then I decided on placement. So I decided where I wanted my motifs to sit on top of my jar topper. So I've got my ball of yarn. And I didn't have anything small enough to make it look like a crochet hook. So I used these very two long pins with the ball top to make knitting needles. Go right there into my yarn. And then here's my cup of coffee with the cream and a nice sweet dessert. A cherry and chocolate jubilee. And that's really all there is to it in terms of the actual end assembly. If, now, if the elastic is too complicated for you or you just don't get it or it's too tricky, or you simply don't have any elastic with you, you can simply take a bit of ribbon and just run it through the open holes in your fabric, in your topper fabric. So you can just weave it on through to where you, and then, and then just pull it and then tie a bow. So you can literally pull this fabric or cinch the fabric around the neck just by weaving it in through the holes. And here is an example of what a bit of ribbon run to cinch that topper might look like. I like the elastic better. I think it gives it a nicer, cleaner look. And it's just easier to deal with because I can pull this topper on and off as I please in order to open the jar. It doesn't get in my way. Where the ties, while are easy and convenient to make and do, you know, you have to untie them and then you have to tie them back again. And that's really not a big deal either, but it's just, it's just a different look and it just really comes down to preference. So you do you. So here you can see that this is my cup of tea that I made. And this right here is the coffee. 
I made. So again, you do you. You can put whatever liquid you want in your cup. You can embellish them any way you want to get the look that suits you best. So if you liked this tutorial, don't forget to check out the other videos I have on my playlist. You might find something that you are as interested in as doing as this. So until we meet again, I just like to remind you to stay creative, stay amazing, and above all, always weave your own weird. Bye-bye now. Have a fantastic weekend.